how to read forex quotes and currency pairs when you first step into the world of forex trading one of the most crucial things you need to grasp is how to read forex quotes and understand currency pairs this skill is very fundamental and it allows you to navigate the market effectively and make informed trading decisions so let's get straight into it understanding forex quotes in forex trading currencies are quoted in pairs this is because when you trade in forex you are simultaneously buying one currency and without even you knowing you are selling another one a forex quote will look something like this euro usd 1.1050 now what does this mean let's break it down the first currency listed euro as you see it in quotes is known as the base currency the second currency as you see here usd the us dollar is also known as the quote currency the number 1.1050 represents the amount of what currency the USD needed to purchase one unit of the base currency, which is the Euro. Now, to make this more relatable, think about it when you travel to a different country. Let's say you are traveling from the United States to Europe. You will need to exchange your US dollars to Euros. The exchange rate you are given is essentially the forex quote. If the rate is 1.1050, it means for every 1 US dollar, you will get approximately 0.9 euros. It is the same concept in forex trading, but instead of exchanging money for a trip, you are doing it potentially to profit from fluctuations in these rates. Now, consider this. You are planning a vacation and you have been watching the exchange rates closely because you want to get the best deal when you convert your money. One day, the rate is slightly better. So you decide to exchange your currency. This scenario is very similar to how forex traders operate, but on a much larger scale and with the intent to profit from these fluctuations. Now in this whole scenario we have bid and ask prices. Forex quotes come with two prices, the bid and the ask. The bid and the ask, not ask. The bid price is the rate at which the market is willing to buy the best currency, while the ask price is the rate at which the market is willing to sell it. Imagine you are at a local market trying to buy apples. The vendor offers to sell you apples at $1.50 each. This is the ask price. However, if you are selling the apples, the vendor might offer to buy them from you at $1.30 each. And this is the bid price. The difference between these two prices is called the spread, which in Forex represents the broker's profit. In the forex market, this spread is crucial. Let's say the Euro USD pair has a bid price of 1.1048 and an ask price of 1.1050. Then that means two pip difference is the spread. It might seem small, but when trading large volumes, this can add up significantly. If you have ever exchanged currency at a bank or airport kiosk, you have likely seen this in action, where the buying and selling rates differ, ensuring that the service provider makes a profit regardless of market movements. Now, another term in this whole scenario is major, minor, and exotic currency pairs. In Forex, currency pairs are divided into three main categories majors, minors, and exotics. Major pairs are the most traded pairs in the world and always include the US dollar. Examples are the Euro USD, the GBP USD, and the USD JPY. These pairs are like the big brand names in the market, similar to how Coca-Cola or Apple are in the retail world. They are heavily traded 
highly liquid and usually have tighter spreads. Minor pairs are currency pairs that do not include the US dollar. Example include the Euro GBP and the AUD NZ. Think of these like popular regional brands that are well known but don't have the same global reach as the majors. While they may not be traded as frequently as the majors, they still offer plenty of opportunities of profit. In the third place, we have the exotic pairs. These ones involve a major currency paired with a currency from an emerging or smaller economy like the USD and the TRY or the US dollar and the Takshilila. These are like niche products that have a smaller audience, often leading to wider spreads and higher volatility. Trading exotic pairs can be compared to investing in a startup company. High risk, but potentially high reward if you know what you are doing. So, understanding the difference between these types of currency pairs is essential because it affects your trading strategy. For instance, major pairs often have low spreads and are often predictable, making them suitable for beginners. On the other hand, exotic pairs with their high volatility might be more appealing for experienced traders who thrive on high risk. Let's talk about how you can relate the movement of currency pairs to your everyday experience. Say you have a favorite coffee shop where you get your morning fix. If the price of coffee beans increase due to a poor harvest, the shop might raise its prices. And similarly, in the forex market, if a country's economy is doing well, its currency might strengthen, causing the price in a currency pair to rise. For instance, if the European Central Bank decides to raise interest rates, the euro might become more attractive for investors, leading to an appreciation in the euro-USD pair. It's like the demand for coffee surging when people hear it is about to become a rare commodity. On the flip side, if there is economic instability in a country, like political turmoil or natural disaster, their currency might weaken. It's akin to a product recall in the retail market, where the brand's value permanent until the issue is resolved. This kind of price movement in currency pairs is what traders aim to capitalize on. Now, let's look at another term. Pips, lots, and leverage. When you hear traders talk about making or losing pips, they are referring to the smallest price movement in a forex squad. Typically, a pip is the fourth decimal price in most currency pairs. For example, if the euro USD moves from 1.1050 to 1.1051, that is a movement of one pip. Relate this to when you notice a small price change at your favorite gas station. Maybe yesterday gas was at $3.50 a gallon and today it is $3.51 a gallon. That one cent difference might not seem like much but if you are filling up a big tank or if it is multiplied across thousands of gallons, it adds up. In Forex, Pips work similarly, especially when trading large volumes. In Forex, trades are usually made in lots. A standard lot is 100,000 units of a currency. But there are also min lots, which are 10,000 units, and micro lots, which are 1,000 units. This is where leverage comes into play. Leverage allows you to control a large position with a relatively small amount of money. It's like putting a small down payment on a house to control the entire property. But remember, while leverage can amplify your profits, it can also magnify your losses. For example, if you're using a leverage of 100 is to 1, it means you can control $100,000 with just $1,000. If the market moves in your favor by 1%, your $1,000 can potentially yield $1,000 in profit. However, if the market moves against you by a small amount, you could also lose $1,000 wiping out your initial investment. 
Now, let's take a look at the role of market sentiment. Market sentiment plays a crucial role in the movement of currency pairs. It is the overall attitude of investors towards a particular market or an asset. If traders believe that the Eurozone economy is on the upswing, they might buy euros, pushing the Euro USD pair. This is similar to how consumer sentiment affects retail markets. If people believe a product will be in high demand, they are more likely to buy it, driving up prices. Conversely, if there is a widespread fear or uncertainty in the market, traders might sell off riskier currencies in favor of safer ones like the US dollar or Swiss francs. It's like people rushing to buy essentials like water and candy goods when a storm is approaching. Demand for safety increases and so does the price of those safe assets. In my conclusion, therefore, understanding forex quotes and currency pairs is a key to learning the rules and a game before playing. By knowing how to read quotes, understanding the dynamics of bid and ask prices, and being familiar with different types of currency pairs, you are setting the foundation for successful trading. But just like in life, where every decision carries some risks, so too does forex trading. It is crucial to combine this knowledge with other forms of analysis and sound risk management practices to navigate the market effectively. Whether you are just starting out or looking to sharpen your skills, always remember that the key to forex success lies in education, practice, and keen understanding of the market pulse. And before I go, make sure to hit that like button if you found this explanation helpful. And don't forget to subscribe for more in-depth insight into the world of forex trading. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I would love to hear how you are applying these concepts in your own trading journey. My name is Osid the Bond Child and I'll see you in the next one.